In 2005, there was a major epidemic that affected a vast population of 6.5 million people worldwide. But it went largely unreported by the mainstream media. That's because this was a virtual play, happening in a video game. And because of that, we were able to grow great insight into human behavior. You see, unlike in real life, in a video game, you can track every person's actions, whereabouts, and responses. It's this insight which helps researchers to better understand human behavior during epidemics and to stop the spread of real-world diseases. It started on September 13th, 2005. An epidemic spread, killing hundreds of thousands. Bodies littered the streets as the disease spread across the entire world of Warcraft. World of Warcraft is a massive online multiplayer game where millions of people are playing the same game at once, able to interact with one another and work together in a rich fantasy world. With update 1.7, the developers added a dungeon called Zul Group, a special contained region within the game. Here people faced off against a mighty creature called Hakar the Soul Flayer. It was able to infect people for 10 seconds with a virus called the Corrupted Blood Plague. It did massive amounts of damage and, just like real life plagues, it could spread from one person to the next. This meant that if you were standing close to one of your friends, they would also get the plague. If they were in turn standing close to somebody else, they would also get it. Spreading from person to person, killing your entire party if you stood too close together. But this was all contained inside this dungeon, this one piece of the game. When people left this area, they would immediately be cured. So what's the problem? If the corrupted blood plague is contained within this small area, then how did it spread? Well, this plague did not only affect the players, but also their pets and minions. So if you summoned a bloodhound, then it would be infected as well. And if you left this dungeon with your pet, your pet would carry the plague outside. We do not know who spread it first, but we do know it spread rapidly. Major towns and cities were abandoned, society collapsed, and the streets turned white with the bones of the dead. Millions of people died, repeatedly. But how does this virtual plague have real-world applications? Well, in the real world, scientists can't just release a pathogen into cities and see how people die. So games such as this help us understand human behavior. People in the game reacted similarly to how people react in real life epidemics. Healers rush towards infected areas, just as doctors rush towards plagues. The infected would sometimes spread it intentionally, just as some people infected with HIV do so in real life. Infected people would teleport from one region to another, just as people in real life might take an intercontinental flight. When you die in World of Warcraft, it isn't permanent, as you'll be resurrected. However, dying is disadvantageous and extremely annoying. Quarantines were being imposed to prevent people from dying, but they either didn't take it seriously or purposefully tried infecting people. This showed researchers something a computer model never could how people react to a quarantine and how it can easily fail. This provided valuable insight into how countries can set up a more effective quarantine, saving thousands, perhaps even millions of people. There were computer controlled characters, such as shop vendors, who could not die from the disease, but who could spread it to other people. Just as in real life diseases, these functioned as carriers. People who don't get sick, but who still carry the disease within them. So imagine you walk into a shop, ready to buy some goods, you walk up to the merchant, and you're dead. Many people decided they simply didn't want to die over and over and over again and again, and decided to simply quit. This plague was eventually removed by a patch, which would make it impossible for the corrupted blood plague to exist anywhere outside of its particular dungeon, and the world was reset. This was a virtual plague. So how does this virtual plague have real-world applications? Well, there is one piece of information that was uncovered by researching the corrupted blood plague, and it was curiosity. People who would walk into an affected area, briefly look around, and then leave, potentially spreading the disease unwittingly to uninfected areas. This is similar to journalists in the real world, for example. 
But don't get me wrong, virtual worlds are not a perfect mirror for human society. One example is that World of Warcraft has proportionally more 20 year olds than teen mothers from Uganda. And people are probably more daring in video games than they are in real life, where death is far less temporary. The Corrupted Blood Plague was a fun glitch in a video game, which was generally well received. And while it isn't the perfect research tool, it could help save millions of lives in future epidemics. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, press the subscribe button. I make new videos all the time. And let me know in the comments whether you think this is a good research tool or not. I read each and every comment on my channel.